Well, we're here at one of the edges of our food plots, um, which is right out here. But that's not what we're gonna focus on in this video. We're gonna talk a little bit about improving the edge and improving the overall um, transition area of your food plots or your openings. Before we jump into it though, please subscribe to our channel to support us and uh, share it with your friends who own land or looking to improve the habitat where they hunt. This has been an ongoing process. You've, if you've watched any of our other videos, you hear us talk a lot about uh, edge feathering. Well, this is an area that we've edge feathered a couple of times over the course of the last 10 years and uh, making some really cool observations today in the middle of all the bugs that are flying around. Um, before this was edge feathered the first time, probably eight years ago, um, it was pretty much all trees with a little bit of coral bearing buck or buck brush growing underneath the trees. But so over the course of the last eight years, we've done some edge feathering. Before we did this, it looked pretty similar to what we have over here. Uh, just a lot of trees, but I know every single one of you that have hunted in timber or own land know that you have a portion of your timber where if you were to base it out and say a beneficial tree and a tree that's just taken up space, we have a crop tree and a weed tree, you would realize that there's a lot of weeds and very few actual crop trees. Um, and so we had a lot of shade. We'll step back over here <clears throat> and you can see there's really, when you look at it, we got one, two, three, four, and then a few other uh, trees over here. So not a whole lot of trees stacked in here like you would typically see in a oak hickory uh, dominated forest. Um, and even up north where it's not oak hickory, you're still gonna have a lot of trees, a lot of shade, and not much vegetation growing underneath. But we've changed that with a little bit of chainsaw, and then we burned it this past, uh, this past March. So we have an ironweed, which is almost five foot tall probably. Um, there's another one, a couple stands of it that's over my head, so it's at least six foot um, tall. So it's providing decent structure, but it's gonna bloom later in the, uh, later in the summer, so it's gonna be beneficial to pollinators. We have a couple other species that are heavily browsed, so browsed that it's hard for me to even tell, um, and I'm not a botanist, so there's a whole lot of browse. If you get down here close with the camera, you can see this plant has been browsed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, ten different times right there. Um, just looking at it real quickly. So that's been heavily browsed. But when you look at it from a cover standpoint, we plant a lot of stuff on the edge of our food plots to make a screen so we can hide our approach. But when you look at this structure here, we're already almost getting that just with our native vegetation, just by cutting trees and burning. And so we've got some of our uh, golden rods right here growing. There's a few little um, clumps of broom sedge that are coming on. As we move on down, you got some black eyed Susan right here on the edge. We got partridge pea, um, some more partridge pea right there. Uh, we do have a little bit of burn weed or fireweed. We've got pokeberry or pokeweed, some people call it. If you look back, come here, uh, as you look back in there, you can see a big clump of blackberry that's just loaded with berries back in there. Um, so many berries, and there's a few black ones. makes me kind of want to crawl back in there and get some, but I know I'll get loaded up with chiggers and ticks. Uh, you got more ironweed. We move on down, it gets a little bit more exciting. More black eyed Susan. We've got some, uh, some of our, one of our mountain mints that's just loaded up with pollinators right now. We do have one of our all time favorites, common ragweed growing right on the edge and even right back in there with some poke weed. Um, keep coming down. You can just see how much sunlight is penetrating and not even have to work that hard to get to the forest floor right there and provide a lot of cover. There's a lot of pokeweed through there. Uh, looks like we've got some prickly lettuce back there too as well. Um, a lot more cover, a lot more food that we didn't have to pay for, we didn't have to fertilize. We just had to open up the canopy and let the sunlight shine. The Lord said, let there be light and there was light. That's what we did right here. We just 
thinned out the timber and let the sun shine and then manage it with fire to, to promote it. And we have a ton of vegetation coming up. But it's not only beneficial to the deer, beneficial to the turkeys, beneficial to the rabbits. Um, I think it's pretty, it, it, it is no coincidence that our trail cameras get a lot of images of rabbits at night when we have them on the edge of our food plots that have been managed like this because we just hold more rabbits. But this was it. This is what was exciting to me, um, being a pollinator enthusiast that I am. I don't know if I've ever seen butterfly milkweed growing in this area, but we have five different sprigs, six different sprigs of it, seven different sprigs of butterfly milkweed growing just right here at the edge of our food plot that you can see is already kind of, look at that, I didn't even, I didn't even hardly get in there and I already have a tick crawling on me. Um, right here at the edge, it's kind of trying to grow out and reach this sun because there are a couple of decent oaks right here on the edge, but we have butterfly milkweed that I can honestly say, I don't remember seeing it that much. Oh, there's another sprig of it um, in this area because it was hardwoods. It was closed canopy hardwoods, but because of sunlight, because of fire, we now are getting more diversity and it's taking some of the browse pressure off of our food plot. So we have more successful food plots. We have more diversity on the eco or on the landscape, more diverse ecosystem. And overall, I don't know why we can't all get excited about this, whether we're a birder, whether we're a, a hunter, whether we're just an environmentalist, we have more diversity and a healthier landscape. Even some black raspberry. We can go through and just list all kinds of, there's some sassafras, some young forest growing up in here. Um, you can see actually where the fire knocked back the initial sassafras right here. And in, what is it? It's July now, so about four months, three months, four months, we have a sassafras four and a half foot tall all from the top kill with a fire, and now it's grown back. So, um, very exciting to see this. This is just one of the many projects we have going on here at the Keith Family Farm. Um, but when you see stuff like this, it should motivate, I know it motivates us, and it should motivate you guys to get out with those chainsaws and do a little work during the winter when it's cool, when you got cabin fever, and enhance your landscape. I guess gotta show you this some browse right there on the common ragweed. Wonderful.